So um, in the start, we'll go with a story about uh, North Korea that I recently read. So it's about this man who escaped North Korea to China. And uh, this man, he uh, at that time he was a boy, and his father was an alcoholic. And he, uh, you know, at that time in 90s, uh, North Korea was undergoing a severe famine. So a bottle of alcohol was almost equal to uh, five meals. Now. Uh, this person, his father would make him go and get the alcohol uh, quite often. But sometimes during the winter when he's going and getting it, he would drop the plastic, uh, the glass bottle and it would break. And he would always think to himself, you know, what if there was this wondrous material that would not break? Uh, and his problem was that not that, you know, he would get the crashing from his father, but his his biggest problem was that he was destroying something that was equal to five meals. So uh, fast forward a few years later, as uh, he was going to, he was crossing the, the river between North Korea and China to escape to China. It was a life and death situation. And in that situation, as he was crossing the river, he saw this garbage pile coming up. And in that garbage, in, in the middle, there was a plastic bottle. And he picked up that plastic bottle and thought to himself, wow, that wondrous material does exist. And he wanted to take it with him, but the guy told him, you know what, there's plenty of more where we are going, people just throw it away. And he thought to himself, wow, you know, there's a place where there are so many of these bottles, I have to do it, I have to do it. So that, that plastic bottle gave that guy the, the confidence and the willpower to carry on, cross the river, and go into China. <clears throat> now, that is truly an incredible thing if you think about it. You know, because plastic is really incredible substance. It has changed our consumer-driven lives. It has changed our economies, if, if I can say, and that changed so many things around us. We cannot live without plastic, simply. But at the same time, we are addicted to it. And that addiction is being based to our environment and also to our health. So I worked with water. Uh, I graduated from uh, college in the US, and then I was working for a major financial firm. And uh, after that, I left everything and came back to India because I wanted to work with water. Uh, you might ask why. It was basically, because uh, so that was something I was really passionate about. While growing up, I had seen it, and I wanted to do something about it. So we started Swajal, and we even working with Swajal, we started this concept of water ready. The idea was that let's decentralize water. So people can get water at a cheap price and, at, uh, and which is safe uh, and which is accessible. So that's around the communities at different different areas. And that particular idea picked up a lot. So if you see then some of the pictures, you'll see uh, uh, some of the water ATMs. There is uh, some in Guwahati, some in schools, uh, some in, uh, there, are, there are some in railway stations. Uh, but I don't know if you've noticed something very interesting in all those pictures. If you see it, all those pictures you'll see that people are taking water in a plastic bottle. Now in our quest to give safe water, we never thought about the container. We never thought in what container will they take the water in. And that proved to be a challenge. So that was a conundrum because you know for people like that person in North Korea, you know plastic can be this liberating thing, you can carry it easily, it will not break. Uh, so the cost is low, but for most of us here, plastic is something we can, you know, we can have a sip and just throw it away, never think about it. So, can you imagine how many bottles are we consuming? So, for example, how long does it take for us to consume 1 million or 10 lakh bottles, plastic bottles? One minute. It takes us one minute to consume 1 million bottles or 10 lakh bottles. We are, so, we are, that's, that's our rate. And 91% of it is never recycled. So this is one part of plastic, and it is definitely really bad. But there is something else about plastic that is even worse, and it's the invisible plastic. So again, let's, let's go on a brief journey. Imagine you are looking up at the sky, right? At a night sky, and there are a lot of stars around. And I know we can't do that in cities anymore, like Bangalore and Grand from Delhi, because we've polluted the uh, environment so much. But think about a pristine sky, right? And you will see thousands and thousands of stars. You can see probably a lot of stars. You can see the Milky Way galaxy. Right now, we have more number of microplastics in our environment than the number of stars in our entire galaxy. 
That is how much we have done here. But what really are microplastics? So microplastics are these small pieces of plastic that are less than 5 mm in size. Uh, so they can be visible, but most of the time they are almost invisible, so you can't even see them. Uh, so, so one of the major ways actually we put microplastics in our environment, and we'll discuss other ways. But one of the major ways is clothes. So right now, most of our clothes, they are made of uh, some polymer, so part of it is plastic. On average, that's 60%. So every time you wash your clothes, uh, some of the microplastics come out of your clothes, and they end up in the drain, from the drain to the river, and from river to the oceans. And that's how all these microplastics in the clothes we are wearing is ending up in a river in, and do that to an ocean sometime. So, and then also another way the rivers are carrying uh, plastic is all the garbage that we dump eventually ends up in the ocean. So as a matter of fact, one of the major sources of plastic contamination of oceans is our rivers. And unfortunately, Ganga is the second highest in the world. So that's a, that's a major issue. So again, but going back to plastic, it is estimated by 2050, we will have more plastic in the environment, in the oceans, than the number of fishes. Imagine, we are we're going to be responsible for something like that, that the number of fishes are going to be less than plastic. Now, in a recent study uh, in packaged drinking water, uh, they found, and this is one of the India's most popular water brand, that there were as many as 5,200 particles of microplastic. This is the second highest in the world and 93% of all sampled water had microplastics. And there is some strong evidence to suggest that it is not because of the water, it was because of the packaging and the bottling process. So you might be thinking, you know what, uh, it's okay, I drink from tap, uh, I have a purifier at home. And it's, you know, but in India, you'll be surprised to know that even the tap water is contaminated with microplastics. As a matter of fact, it is the third highest in the world. 83% of all tap water surveyed in India had microplastic. And where is that coming from? It's actually coming from all the clothes and all that that we were discussing. So we've already damaged our ecosystem so much that our tap water, which you think might be safe, isn't safe. Even that is micro contaminated microplastic. So one, one idea is maybe we can recycle. You know, recycling is something that we're talking a lot about. You know, let's do recycling and uh, maybe that can help. Uh, but that's actually a really big myth, and that's a one very, very big myth because the problem is whenever plastic is recycled, it is actually downcycled. So that means plastic from the chair bottles, they will be made into small pieces and then they'll become uh, part of our clothes, clothing lines. So that's a very, very big problem. And so there is no such thing as green recycle. Whenever it is recycled, microplastics are produced. So plastic does not go away miraculously, right? It just goes from one form to another form. And the number of plastic that you're producing is increasing at an exponential rate. So that means if recycling was that successful, we would, it would be stabilizing, right? But it is not. It's still growing. Now, of the 8,300 million tons of plastic produced, only about 100 million tons were recycled. We had collected about 500 million tons, but of that also only 100 million tons was recycled. So that's a very, very small number. As a matter of fact, China was one of the primary recycle centers. So the world, all the, all the countries were sending their plastic waste to China, but this year they stopped uh, taking it. And so you would think, why? You, know, you have to ask why. Because as soon as they stopped taking it, that laid bare the myth of recycling. Because even though it has an economic incentive, it comes with a greater environmental problem. And so they stop taking it. So the only way to actually stop getting this microplastic into the environment is actually to stop making it. Because uh, recycling and all that is only like a band-aid to the problem. It is good, it is definitely good, but it is only a band-aid to the problem. <clears throat> so now, microplastic is everywhere. We've established that it is in our water, it is in our food, it's in our salt, it is in our beer. So even if you want to go out for a beer, you are having some microplastic guys. Uh, so much so that we have found microplastic in breast milk. So even infants are ingesting it. So you're probably thinking, okay, you know, there are microplastic, but who cares? It's maybe just a small nanometer, I don't care. It's a, I'm alive right now. So can you guess how much microplastic you're eating? How much does it amount to? It's about one credit card every week. 
So you're having about five grams of plastic every week. So it's like going on Sunday after dinner and you eat a cup of bread. That's how much plastic you're eating. It's, it's very hard to think, but that is just it. Because it is so much present in our environment. So uh, back back in, 19, you know, in 19, uh, 1900s, uh, we used to use asbestos a lot. I don't know if you guys heard that. So asbestos was a very, very popular building material. But then they found out that asbestos was uh, toxic. Uh, we, doctors in the US used to recommend cigarettes, and then they found out that it was inducing cancer. Uh, there were lots of pe pesticides that were used for a very long time, and they were suddenly banned. Because suddenly we realized, oh my god, they are toxic, we should stop using them. Microplastic could be the next major health hazard that we have no idea about. We are, don't even, we are not even aware about this. So like how right now we know, for example, yes, cigarettes do induce cancer, think about us, you know, maybe our grandchildren thinking that, you know, our grandparents had no idea, you know, they were having plastic and they had no idea. So what's the impact of this? How, how is this plastic consumption impacting us? We know that it has a negative side effect on our nervous system, it is having an uh, effect on our hormones, and it can also cause induce cancer. And there is research from India that suggests that it can aggregate in blood and obstruct the flow of the blood in our body. Uh, in fishes, we know it has found to uh, slow reproductive growth and also the growth uh, of the animal. But most experts agree that there is not enough research and we need to do more research on it. Because this is a topic that is very important. So we need to know what to do about it. And the plastic intake that you're taking is only increasing. So probably, for example, our parents probably did not ingest as much plastic before. Now, so going back to uh, water in the end, you know, I thought, what can we do? So we introduced the BYOB concept. Uh, so it's bring your own bottles, but not alcohol bottle, guys, empty bottle. So the idea was you would get bottle to our uh, uh, water area and take water yourself. So we stopped selling plastic bottles over there and we started uh, encouraging people to bring their own bottle. How? We put up a price of glass bottles. We started selling glass bottles over there. Similar to in your stores, you know, they stopped giving plastic bags and started saying, oh, it's seven rupees. So that barrier increased the, uh, increased the, uh, this changing from plastic to non-plastic. So that was very successful. Uh, we did some very interesting experiment in a school in Haryana. What we did was that we gave uh, glass bottles, actually they were uh, like uh, those small SS bottles, and we gave it to children and we said, you know, take these bottles home with you. And when you take it home, uh, we, we expected that, you know, so uh, contaminated water is the number one reason school children get diseases. Uh, so we thought maybe this will increase the school attendance. And that happened, but something very, very interesting happened which we had not expected the attendance of school teachers went up. And we found out that the teachers were coming to school more often because that was becoming their source of taking water to back to their homes. So uh, it had this uh, amazing thing that we had not even anticipated. Now, the problem with plastic is the convenience. It is amazingly convenient. And it is very hard to be that convenience. But we can come to those. So in Squadron, what we have started doing is we have started putting uh, uh, these uh, zero-mile water systems. So we put this in hotels, in schools, in hospitals, even in universities. So it's a small system which is in the, in the facility itself, and you can fill the, the glass bottles and then they recycle throughout the facility. So it's a called zero-mile water. So we are also saving on the carbon emissions, because remember, if something is coming to you from far away, you're also burning diesel and carbon emissions to get it. Right. So the three main ways we interact with, uh, with this kind of plastic, if we can summarize these three ways, will be clothes, uh, consumer goods, and water. So when it comes to clothes, it's fairly obvious. Uh, we have to stop, we have to decrease our water of size. Because the fast fashion that we are in love with comes at a great cost to us later on. So basically the clothes we are wearing are cleaning. So it's a problem, right? So we have to increase the water size, but also the common sense things like installing a small filter at the end of your washing machine to uh, get the microplastic can have a lot of uh, benefit. So we can catch the microplastic right there before it goes down the drain and goes to the river. Uh, when it comes to uh, consumer goods, you know, your toothpaste, your, your beauty products, your shampoo, they all have microplastic beads. 
Remember, if something is cheap and amazing, it, it comes at a cost which comes to us later on. So I'm not suggesting that we go herbal, even though that that would be amazing for the environment and for you. But even as consumers, if we demand, you know, microplastic free, manufacturers will respond. So as consumers, we just have to be aware. Okay, what does it have? Is, does it have microplastic free? I will not use it. And if you don't, then people will not go for it. They will go for something else. And when it comes to water, it's actually even better, it's easier. You already have the solution. We just avoid packaged water. Wherever you go, get your, take your bottle with you. And uh, you know, as college students, we, we do that often. Um, if uh, we, at in office, don't use those 20 liter packaged water, just put a purifier. And that can have a major impact. Yes, I know there's water, there's plastic in water itself, but that's very less compared to as much will be if you have it through packaged water. And you'll be reducing the ecosystem altogether. So we need to think about our bodies and think about the ecosystem, right? So one, la one last thing I want to say is that uh, if you think about the old ecosystem, remember in the 90s and the 80s when we used to have soft drinks in these glass bottles? So we have a system that worked. And, and for some reason we went away from it. We can go back to that system easily. So the idea was that you get these glass bottles, then you return it for a small refund. And that has, that there are studies to prove that that is actually much more sustainable than plastic. So we can just go back to old systems that we had and they were working and they were sustainable. And the best part is a lot of this is already happening. You know, as consumers, we are seeing a lot of this change already happening. A lot of, uh, a lot of companies are already making uh, this change. So this is already making a lot of impact. But the main thing I wanted to say today was that, you know, with the plastic, the biggest problem is that it is something commonly it is we, we do with, we think, okay, plastic is going somewhere, it is some waste dump, some ocean, who cares? But actually we have to care because, as I said, it, it depends, it, 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 it is coming back to us. Even though it is not coming back to us in visible form, it is coming back to us in invisible form. So the ecosystem, if we avoid it, it's not just the plastic that you see in your garbage bins or some landfill, you're not just saving that, that is amazing. But you're also saving from eating that plastic. You know, because, let's be honest, plastic is, is important, right? Well, everything around it we see, this is plastic, there are screens that are plastic, and we cannot avoid that. We definitely cannot avoid that, but there are sometimes forms of plastic, like single-use plastic, like straws, like bottles, which we can avoid. And we definitely cannot, for example, avoid the credit card. We, we know we need that card, uh, but we can definitely avoid drinking that much uh, in our water. Thank you.